We got our motor in, we got our chassis on the table, well nothing's changed there, only difference is we got some different steel, I got some 2x4, I got some strapping, got some plate, we're going to uh, start fabbing up our frame rails, that's kind of the plan. Uh, I'm going to place out, I'm going to replace out these 2x3s for some 2x4, we're going to slim up the rail here, mount the, the rails inside and kind of plate them over. Like we're gonna cut out on the table a nice transition into it. Uh, I want the rails to kick out as wide as I can. Therefore, I have a lot of room for the trailing arms. I have room for my bags. And then basically once we kick over there, I can kind of go up and over the, uh, the, the, the body, uh, if that makes sense. Up and over the axle, but kind of close to the body, wide in the back, a lot of room for fuel tank, all kinds of stuff like that. That is kind of the plan. We're a little limited to where we hit the body here because I'm not going to kink this or anything. So we're, we're going to go out as much as we can without making anything super weird. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, what else? Well, you see me bring in my motor. So that is in. Yes, we're going with an LS. Uh, I don't have a Dodge. I don't really have any intention to go buy a Dodge motor. So I know a lot of people say I should put a Mopar in there and well if somebody gave me one I might use it but I'm not purposely gonna go hunt for one <laughs> not when I have stuff lying around I did manage to find an AR5 so this is actually from a four-cylinder Colorado five-speed uh, and it had a fab bot adapter on it so that's a huge win the bell housing's broken but it's okay because from that square body there's actually uh, a transmission with a, 4L, a bad 4L60 over there and I'm going to use the transmission off of it or the, the bell housing. So anyways I guess these are pretty popular I guess the ratio is good they can handle I know for sure like 500 five to 600 horse people are saying I don't know I don't plan to have anywhere near that with this but uh, this motor needs to be gone through really quick this is the one I kind of hurt in my Buick so I just want to well, we'll go through it. Maybe I'll re-ring it. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Who knows? <laughs> kind of do the old dingle ball. Throw some rings in it. Smash it together. I have one plug that was broken. Or like stripped out. Kind of. I don't know how that happened. But. So I got to replace one of the heads and stuff. So. Eh. No big deal. Go through the pan. Because I just swapped pans and did all that stuff. So. Anyways. I want to do that. I want to get the AC on. I'd like to get. At least the front part of the frame done, maybe the motor mocked up inside. And then we can kind of see how our steering and a few things are going to go. The rear should be pretty straightforward, but we'll see where we get. That's kind of the, uh, the goal here. I know people keep talking about my little baby Hemi over there, my uh, Dodge Hemi to put in there. The plan for that motor, people always forget, is uh, I want to use that motor in my Model A coupe. So basically I want that one to have... Well, in case you've never seen it, the boy's working over here. Um, see, I got this small, I think it's a 315 Hemi. I did get it running. I want to have it with a manual with this 470 blower. And I want to put it on that blue 30 Model A I have outside. 
I want to do that with uh, 32 rails. Like that's kind of the, the idea of where I'm going with it. I want to build it that way. So anyways, back at that, we're going to go uh, move some stuff out of the way. I'll probably lift the body up, switch out those rails. We'll probably cut those rails down and figure out basically how much we can, how wide and what we can do underneath there. I think that is uh, kind of the plan. I think tonight the guys are going to come out, so I'll probably just goof with that thing tonight while they're out here. We'll go through it quick and check it over. I don't know if I have a set of rings. I'll have to look. Anyways, let's get started. Okie doke. I got sidetracked, started playing with this rack, mostly because a buddy of mine's out here, and I was going to get him to thread the ends of these shafts. Anyways, as you know, in the past, this is from a smart car. Uh, one of the viewers told me about it. Awesome. I am digging it. It looks just about bang on to what the original pivots are. Uh, basically, I took it apart. I've cut the ends off. My idea is this stuff is almost the right. Well, it's right. We can uh, tap this, but I got to do it in reverse thread. I can't uh, do any threading on my lathe. So, because my gearbox is broken, so it's basically all hand spinning. Anyways, if we look at this, I should be able to thread it, get a good chunk of it in there on either side. And uh, then we just got to position the box. I'll have to machine off where the electric motor was, but I think this is going to work out great. I guess time will tell. I'll let you know if this thing uh, doesn't quite work right, but... <laughs> Because I'm really concerned about the bump steer because we are air ride, so this is going to go up and down. But anyways, I was just getting this stuff ready. Like I say, a buddy of mine's coming down, and either he's going to take the ends or the whole box, I don't know. But I want him to thread these down so we can put them into the stock sleeves from the S10. That's kind of my goal, to make that uber easy. Unfortunately, I don't think they actually reproduce these, or I haven't found one. Like I say, I got this one for 100 bucks, so I'm pretty happy about that. Anyways, all right, so I got that all distracted, that distraction out of my way. We're uh, getting back on to uh, lifting this up. We're going to measure out, figure out what I want to do for my kick. And we'll uh, cut some frame rails and kind of go from there.
righty, we move the rails in or cut them. We've lined them up. I kind of squared everything up. They're down. I have, you see me tack weld some stuff in here and it's just because the way I'm gonna transition this, uh, we'll probably just kind of do a nice swoopy swoop into here. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing in the back yet. So we've tacked everything so it doesn't move. I can slide it forward and backwards, but it uh, can't go side to side or go off track. So that, like it might be here and I might end up making a nice transition. I'm not sure. I'm uh, gonna dismantle this thing here. And then we're gonna start doing some CAD to see what I want, want it, what I want it to look like, I guess. And then we'll come back and we'll figure out what we're gonna do on the back here. I'm not sure how my kick up is gonna go. All I do know is like the two by two is here. I'll end up mocking up my motor and tranny so we can figure out roughly where the cross member is gonna be. And then we'll know basically where, if you look at this, this will be like my two link. It's gonna kind of like scooby along there. So wherever my transmission mount ends up being is what my cross member will be. That's kind of the, kind of the idea. Cause we want to do that. We want to do an end on there. We're going to come back here. I'll probably build something that'll bolt onto the axle. Then we could, we don't have to take the arms off with it or we can take the arms off separate kind of a dealio. Uh, somewhere in here vicinity is like around now that I got this super, super long. <laughs> One handed. Uh, quarter inch thing is not so easy here all right so like roughly like I say in that idea is or in this area zone is what I am thinking we're gonna have just a mild step up it's gonna go I have a bag right here so the plan is the bag will probably sit up on the frame rail up here it's kind of what I want to do that way I can get a lot of lift out of the bag uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're loosely got that figured out. I don't know what's really, really what's happening here yet, but let's first do this stuff and then we'll see. We got a whole lot of things we got to do, but first things first, let's just get this part of the frame done. Then it doesn't matter if that stuff's loose because it's that part's done. Then we want to do the kick up and over and then then we can kind of like start setting up cleaning up the axle and stuff but uh for now we just kind of want the overall chassis to to function and do what i want anyways uh enough babbling let's just uh start cutting some steel and uh make some stuff work here
I was today old when I learned I had this plate welded onto that doodad and I had my uh, plasma torch zip tied onto there. I decided to get a collet and uh, properly put my torch head on there, but I guess it's not low enough. So that's why you've seen me with uh, this thing keep tapping my uh, torch to hit my limiting switch so I can actually do my cuts. <laughs> Right here I have, when it touches down, there's a little micro switch up here. So it's got to hit that. Well, I guess this doesn't go low enough. So I have some uh, re-engineering to do to fix that because this threaded rod up here kind of bottoms out before it can touch the plate. So <laughs> I kind of learned that. So I'll have to cut that up and we'll, we'll fix that up. But anyways, with that said and done, we have, uh, our plates here are all cut so we're gonna uh, bring them over to our frame and we're gonna start buzzing these things in and then we'll start making some top caps to uh, hold everything together I think hindsight I probably should have put a hole somewhere on here because I think the one side is gonna work but eh, whatever we'll, fi we'll figure it out
Look at that. Looks pretty fancy, eh? <laughs> I, uh, what did we do? Well, we made the plates, we welded those in, seen that. I cut the top hat, or top part of the frame. That is burned in, we welded the inside, the outside, like this thing's welded every which way. I have not welded the bottom side yet. I, uh, I cut some plates to do the boxing, but I'm gonna wait till basically the chassis is kind of done and I can lift it up on the hoist and then we can kind of do it that way. Um, so we're gonna do our kick over the back. I'm not sure where we are in time right now, but I'm going to, for now, just set the body down. We'll see how nice this all fits into the front, kind of uh, how that fit, fits and feels. And then uh, we'll try to come up with a game plan to kind of go up and over the differential. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to make some new mounts though. We're probably gonna have to blitz off these bump stops. And because of where my frame is, oh, it's not gonna be that big of a deal right now. No, we'll be okay. I'm just gonna figure out what the angle of the dangle I wanna do. I might actually have to put my motor in and then we can see. No, it'll be fine. We'll put the motor in, but I, I guess we'll just kinda do, I don't know if I wanna go straight up. I don't think I want to. I kinda wanna come at a nice little bit of an angle, but hmm. Gonna ponder, got a plan, not a very good one yet, but uh, we'll figure this junt out. I guess that's the problem is this side, the pipe is actually too tall. That's what I was thinking. This one, it's level with the frame. I might just cut the top of this pipe off just so I can uh, work my, my magic up and over the diff. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs>
Hey, pup. Pretty classy, eh? Look at that. Snazzy front chassis. Pretty close to being fully mounted. <laughs> That's a heck of a step, eh? Looks pretty swanky, though. So in the back, I cut some 2x3s, but I didn't take into consideration. So my rail's all 2x4. My step is 2x4. I was going to uh, do a 2x3 on top of my frame, but then I realized that my pumpkin was going to be too high, like the top of the diff. So I did the step with 2x4. Uh, the whole back half of the car, I'm just going to do a 2x3. That's going to kind of go around here, and then the fuel tank and stuff will be sunk under there so um yeah <laughs> this is where we're at so you can see now when i do the floor it'll just clear because i'll probably just i want to keep it low so we got some room for stuff uh like i want to have my air ride in here my fuel tank if i can tuck most of that back into this section that would be great then that would leave me with actual trunk space Especially if we are road tripping, we can actually fit a spare tire and some stuff like that would be awesome. Anyways, we still got to box all of this stuff, but I think that is uh, where we're going to end this one. I, uh, yeah, kind of a long day, so I am kind of done. <laughs> Anyways, we, uh, we did do it good. We got the front of the frame, the center's done, our kick up is established. I kind of have an idea what I'm doing for my bags and things, sort of. That's still to be de determined, but uh, I guess next round we're gonna like, um, I gotta finish up the back. I wanna get the motor uh, and trans kind of just hovering in there. I don't know if I'm building the cross member and the motor mountain stuff yet, but I do wanna get it into the car so that we can figure out where stuff is gonna go. Mostly where we can figure out where our trailing arms are going to go to what section in the middle of the frame. I have to get some more steel, but I might build my center section just out of some 2x3 because I do have a whole lot of that here. But, uh, yeah. I guess for now, this is where we're at. I, uh, I want to thank you all for watching, and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Or, uh, Hopefully we get this whole chassis and stuff mostly buttoned up. Won't be done, but mostly. Close. <laughs> All right. Later, folks.